Hi everybody, Quint Lears with NewHomesales.com. I'm here with Eric Cofield with Top Builder Solutions. Eric, thanks for joining us. Thanks, man. How are you, buddy? Good to see you. Uh, hey, how's the show for you? Well, the show has been good for me. I want to know how the show's going for you because you've had two speaking engagements. You spoke on how to make your website battle ready, cash flow engineering. What are you seeing right now with, with builders? And I know you meet and consult with a lot of different entities. What are you, what are you seeing right now on the front lines? Well, finally, I think we're at a point where builders are adopting technology at a more rapid pace. Um, and so that's fantastic. It's fantastic for the industry in general. Uh, so that's good. Yeah. One of the presentations was, your website is not afraid. Make it battle ready. And what I found in talking with the builders afterwards, I think it was well received. You know, I, I always come in singing or marching or something, catch everybody's attention. Uh, Builders are still, a lot of builders are still sort of complacent with a digital brochure of a website, and they're not viewing their website as a piece of military equipment that really can do battle with their competitors. I made a, an analogy with the How to Win Monopoly, uh, and they all loved it. And um, it's pretty simple. You know, in Monopoly, you almost always win if you just create a housing shortage, like buy all the houses as fast as you can. And with your website and in marketing in general, what you're trying to do to outposition your competition is take the leads away from the other builders as fast as you can. Because these consumers, they're not going to go to 12 builders, right? They're only going to go to a few, a small number of builders. And so the earlier that the builders can capture those leads and keep them on site, if they've got interactive floor plans or other mechanisms to keep them on the site longer, they're much more likely to get their prospects information and then their contact and then on-site visit and sell them a house. So you've got interactive floor plans. What else can builders do to keep people on the website longer to capture that lead upstream? Yeah, well, they can. there's a lot of things. Uh, videos, animations, renderings, a mortgage calculator, uh, a VIP customer um, sign-up form. Uh, you know, most builders have contact us forms, but you should have multiple types of contact us forms at different places on the website. Uh, so the more that they can engage and be interactive, um, uh, really the better the builder can do. Um, now, I w you were talking about how to win at Monopoly, and if you're in jail, what do you do? Oh, if you're in jail, never roll three times. That's a waste of time. you got to pay the money, get out of jail, because it's all about cash flow, right? Uh, the faster you go around the board, the faster you get the money, the faster your opportunity. Because if you stay in jail for three turns, that's three missed opportunities to buy a property, buy houses, something. So never stay in jail. Don't go to jail either, by the way. So don't go to jail. We're going to win Monopoly by buying up the houses. Don't go to the hotels. If you're in the jail, you just pay the money, get out, start buying up more houses. What else do we need to do to win at Monopoly and win at new home sales? Well, um, you know, I think a lot of builders are not really planning for the to win up front. You got to plan for the unexpected. You have to plan how to win up front. In my cash flow presentation, which is cash flow is king, why you're not making what you should, we talked about a lot of things that builders can look at before they ever go into business. For example, if your salary is a variable cost of, you know, like whatever is left is my salary, that's not a plan. That's not sustainable. So your salary needs to be a fixed cost whether it's 80 grand a year, 40 grand a year, $400,000 a year, whatever that is for you, you've got to make that a fixed cost. And if your plan doesn't work at that, then you gotta adjust your plan. The other thing that builders aren't really looking at um, is how many leads are you getting and what's the conversion rate? Because if those two numbers specifically, there's many numbers we could look at, but those two numbers specifically, if your plan says you're supposed to get 800 leads this month and you're only getting 400, that cash flow is going to cascade down the rest of the way. So those leads that are coming in initially, that's where it all starts. You don't make a profit and you don't have cash flow unless you have the right amount, uh, right, right amount of leads, I should say. Now, you mentioned the conversion ratio. What's the national average? What's a builder can say, pat them on the back and say, I'm doing well. What's the ones where they should be ashamed of themselves? What, where are we supposed to be with conversion? Well, that's a double-edged sword. I don't think I can answer that because it's a lose-lose answer. But and not only is it about the, the market you're in, like if you're in Colorado Springs, you're selling if you open the door. So why do you show up at 1010 or 1030 when you could have maybe sold a house at 10 a.m.? Now, other areas, that's not the case, right? There are, there are places where it's still hard to sell. So 
it's kind it's it's really very local you know i don't know that there's a national average that's gonna make sense to every builder um I appreciate that's actually a really good answer because you know if you had said hey 25 percent, it wouldn't make sense it's not a one size so real estate is localized and it's different in every single market let me ask you a couple questions so you're giving back you you're starting up a new blog you wrote a, a book that's up on amazon yeah. i just look up eric cofield it'll come up eric um you're amazon. you're, you're another book too i've written a children's book that it, it's really for builders but it's designed well it's a children's book but the messages are all for builders and it gives the builders a way to talk about what they do custom builders it gives them a, a a children's book they can give to their kids that teaches the kids what the builder goes through and how they can do marketing in a different way. Because what's the adage? If you always do what you've always done, you always get what you always got. But I would suggest that that is not true anymore. You you will not get what you got. In fact, if you send 50,000 emails today, there's no way you get the response that you would have gotten 10 years ago. So builders must continue to look at ways to innovate. I would really I, I tell all my customers this, you cannot do what everyone else is doing and think that you're going to get some better, uh, better result. What's the, the saying is you don't have to outrun the bear, you just have to outrun the person you're with. So builders can outposition their competition. They just have to look for you know, new and different ways. When I come singing into my presentations, uh, in the cash flow one, I was singing Money, Money, Money by ABBA. It wakes up everybody and they're like, who's this crazy man singing? But you know what? They stop and they pay attention and it didn't cost me a thing. It cost me some audacity and some confidence. So in their marketing, builders have to have confidence, audacity, and they have to do something different. It's just, it's just not enough to do the same thing as everybody else does. Now, I want to encourage you to write a book about how to win at Monopoly for children because what, some of my most traumatic uh, memories was losing at Monopoly, just tears coming down. I'm like, ah, I don't want to. And I just, I, I wanted to win, man. So I wish you told me this when I was, you know, five or six years old. Hey, so do you want to sing something for our audience right now? Sing something? Yeah, do something. <clears throat> what if I fail? I won't let you fail. What if I fall? I won't let you fall. I don't sing, man. I just, this is just you know, to wake people up. I, I was getting, I thought, man, you touched me just then. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, right. so let me tell you this. So you're, 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 you're speaking, you got the blog, you're writing a book, you're doing a lot of things, you're consulting. Who have, who have been some of the people that have been your consultants, been your leaders, uh, any resources, books, trainers, anything that, that you tap into for your strength? It, well, you know, I was a professor at a university level, so I've taught a lot. I, I was teaching, a, even as in sixth grade, I was going down to like first graders and helping them during lunch. I'm not sure what that says about me. Maybe I was a geek way back then. But the guy who really impressed me early on in this industry was John Palumbo. Singularly, the best presentation I have ever sat in is his sales, well, the the presentation wasn't sales gnosis. His sales gnosis book, sales meaning sales and gnosis meaning knowledge, sales knowledge, awesome book. But he did this um, magic, the magic of sales presentation. He had the whole audience mesmerized, like we could not figure out. He would say, you know, think of uh, this and think of that, and then, like, no matter who you were in the audience, you were totally astounded at the next slide. He's so good. John Palumbo is. He's a master. Mentalism, ladies and gentlemen. Mentalism. It's that that's going to be good. John Palumbo. Anybody else you want to give a shout out to? Oh gosh, there's a lot. You know, I mean, Bob Schultz. Uh, I met him what twenty something years ago, and he had his audience. You know, he's like Sven Gali, right? And Bob Schultz is one of those people who just you know he'll just tell you like it is, and. I'm sort of brutally honest with my customers. I offer to grade their websites. You know, I'll get, you know, I'll put a fake lead in and see how you respond because a lot of these builders, frankly, they don't do a great job of responding. I say the builders, but it's really the salespeople. Now you're rocking it in your local market in sales and, and everything you do, I'm really impressed by. But um, what I find is that uh, there's a lot of room for improvement, and which is both good and bad. It's bad because they're not selling as many homes as they could, but it's good because there's a giant jump in improvement that they can make if they would just do something different. And Bob Schultz was just, he's so right on. And sometimes I'm a little too brutal. So I was grading some builders' websites, and I said, look, here's 22 tips that you can do. Just take this home and grade yourself. And he said, no, you go to my website and you grade it for me. Okay, he's a customer of mine, I'll do that. So I go and I said, look, man, you got five things instead of 22. You can do better. You can make your website battle ready. You can make that website compete 
because that website does not need a Valentine's Day card. That website does not care if it's working overtime. That website is really a big piece of the puzzle for builders, and they need to put more emphasis on that website. Give me some of the tips, some of the 22 things that you look for. On a website? Okay, I, I don't want to see any clip art images. I don't want to see images of the the fake person. If you've got online chat, I think you should have text message marketing too for that matter. Um, if you've got real people in your business doing real things, I want to see those real pictures. It's not a dating site. I don't care if you're a good looking guy or a lady with a pretty smile. I want to see that. I want to make that human connection. So I want to see who owns the company. If you can, if you've got a lot of people, put a picture of your team. Um, if you've got an online sales counselor, which obviously everybody, like you don't have to sell many homes to afford at least a part-time online sales counselor. Um, I want to see a real picture there. I want to see ways that you as a builder through your website can engage and attract me as the consumer. I want to know what you do. I want to know what am I getting? What do you stand for as a, as a company? Um, I, I want to I want the builder to be an educator. I want to see a frequently asked questions because if, especially for first time home buyers, you know, there's a lot of resources that you as the builder could provide them. You know, how, what are homeowners, homeowner associations? What are they really about? Why are homeowner associations your ally? For example, um, I just think that builders could do a better job of being a, a resource for uh, these prospects because you, you know, you're, you're trying to move those suspects to prospects to, qualified prospects faster than any other builder in your business. So those builders need to go to every website of every competitor. What can I do better than them? And sometimes it's not very hard. You know, it's not very hard to do better than the average because average what? Average is just average. And all you have to do is do a little bit better than average and you're the leader. Eric, you're doing a lot better than average. And let me let me talk a little bit about you because you did something little bit ago that touched me and I, th I think what I sense from you is that authenticity is is very my, important my brutal honesty my brutal honesty is the authenticity you know I just try and help the guys I just try and help the folks that I see uh, I work for so many software companies for years now and I went out on my own and um, unfortunately soft, some software companies really are not the builder's friend, right? And I don't like the insinuations and the implications because I know what those software companies are doing. So I help builders choose software. Um, I've got like a 200 question list, totally brand agnostic. I'll just give it to them and then they can go do whatever they want. I, I got into this industry, my dad wanted to be a builder and he, was, uh, he and I built a doghouse. That doghouse was so heavy and like you couldn't move the doghouse. It was on the porch and I built it with him. And he always wanted to be a builder, but he was always dragged in other directions. And so, I don't know, I just like builders and I want to help them, I guess. Yeah. Eric, a little bit ago, something terrible happened to your home. Talk about that. Oh, man. I live in Houston, so my house got flooded and kids' house got flooded. But look, change is the only constant, right? We've got to get up and get going and... Um, you know, I feel very blessed, and I say the word blessed not, not lightly. I feel blessed because I'll get through it, right? Uh, you know, your boat evacuated, and you're putting your, um, your dog on the boat. I lost a lot. So what? Well, what I want to tell you is that, and you posted pictures of it, and it was in such a way that you didn't say... I didn't feel sorry for you. I felt inspired because you said, look, I lost my home. We didn't have flood insurance. I still have more to give. I can continue to work. I'm going to get back on the front lines and you're doing it. Yeah. My wife lost some antiques and stuff and she said, you, you know, I, I always wanted a new couch, but I sure didn't want it this way. So be careful for what you wish for. But I, I think you have to put your, your life back and you just got to get up and get going. I mean, you got to get up and get going. And so uh, I'm so blessed that I work out of my house. My income didn't really change. My financial situation changed. Called my financial advisor and she said, no, 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 don't be cashing in your stuff. Just take loans out. So, okay, so we did. So maybe I work a little bit longer. Maybe I work a couple extra years than I anticipated. But um, the stuff is stuff. I'm, I'm glad the grandkids are safe, the dog's safe, my wife's good. We're all good. You know, in retrospect, it's fine.
it's okay. We'll get through it. But thank you so much for asking. That's uh, means a lot. Well, and I think it's a testament to doing what you love to do um, because you were able to get there and say, you know what, I'm just going to keep doing what I love to do. And you're, you're making an impact. I want everybody to check out. How do we connect with you? Uh, well, topbuildersolutions.com is, uh, is the company. So uh, Eric, E-R-I-K-C, at topbuildersolutions.com. And you've got a speaking event coming up. Talk about that. Um, I'm doing one for the SMA uh, next week, um, and I'll be at their convention um, uh, later this year. I did two here. Uh, I'll submit some more. And my mom always said, you should run your mouth for a living. Well, I took that advice. And best home builder practices? Are we, are we going to yeah, be up there? Yeah, uh, best home builder practices right in June coming up this year. I've, I've got a couple things going on there, too. You're doing big things. I want everybody to check it out. Check out topbuildersolutions.com here with my friend Eric Thanks so much for joining us. Keep making an impact. Thanks for being an encouragement to me, to the watchers, and, you know, to the other people that were. Um, uh, one thing that you learned going through the flood, through that hardship, tell me something that you took away from that. Well, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. Um, you just don't know what's going to happen. You or I could have had any experience in the world yesterday, right? And I think you have to be emotionally prepared, financially prepared. That's good, too. Uh, because your book is continually being written until the last page of the last day, and you don't know what your chapters are going to be. So you need to position yourself or your company to handle what comes, what comes your way, you know? There's, I mean, there's a lot of people that had a lot of loss. I'm just one of 500,000. We've got fires and freezing streets and floods and... Um, but, but we as humans adapt to our situation, and I think, I think you just have to keep going and be prepared as best you can for whatever comes your way. Let, let me end with this. You know, there's all different trainers and consultants, and you know, some of them are flashy, and you do this, the, some of the flashy stuff too, but you had mentioned that you're more of the brain type, more of the, you mentioned nerd, professor, but it takes all these different people, and you, you've got a lot of wisdom, you've got a lot of insights, so I would encourage people to check it out, not just... You know, what's the big flashbang thing? But who are the people that have the wisdom, the long-term, uninterrupted service to the industry, helping people? Thanks for giving back, Eric. Thanks for being an inspiration. Hey, and congratulations to you. Uh, congratulations on the nominations, the awards, your book. Um, what's the name of the book I can go by? Hey, it's on Eric. Build a book set. But today, this is your show. I'm here to present for you, man. So Top Builder Solutions. Thanks. Guys, keep watching. Please share this video. Subscribe. Go play Monopoly, smoke them, yeah. give us a comment on how you did that. Buy all the houses you can buy. Buy all the houses you can buy. Get out of jail, pay it, do it. That's right. Thanks, everybody. Quint Lear's newhomesales.com.